So we start with the idea of Nano VR. We assemble a nice brave cast of heroes. So this is me, Greg, Karen, and our advisor, Jay Gilbert, along with on the right side, our student team of scientists, uh, computer scientists, artists, nano engineers. And then on the left side, we have our advisor reboard and uh, people that have been helping. So our, our first business model canvas was kind of a mess. It was a bunch of ideas that we threw out there. We thought drug developers would be able to use this, you know, taking a protein, taking a drug, seeing it in 3D. It's going to be so cool. Everyone's going to love it. Uh, but what we soon realized that it, it was a very hairy situation. And we had to select exactly what we wanted to do with Nano VR. So we got out of the building and we talked with customers. Uh, but most importantly, we listened. And we really took the feedback in, in what they said, and, and we started trying to, to recognize patterns uh, to what was going on. And what we did is we ended up shrinking down our customer segment uh, to just the, the researchers. And I, I think that was a, a good move in terms of um, they, they would be a twofold customer segment, because a lot of the researchers and academic institutions would like to teach what they're working on as well as actually use it for their research. So we ended up uh, crossing out a lot of customer segments in our next iteration of the business model canvas, um, which was good and bad. I, I think we, we might have crossed out a little bit too much, but th there's always uh, room for artistic exploration. But then something amazing happened. We found our product market fit. We found the people where we could go up and, and tell them about our product, and they say, hey, that's some pretty cool stuff. If it could do this, I'll buy it. So we started trying to make those features, and we actually have a minimal viable product now. Um, we focus on, on the three customer segments. So this is our, our final business model canvas. And the drug developers and biotech companies are, are still there, but really the, the university lab researchers and educators are, are the main priority right now because we could take the 3D systems that we're working with and give it to them and have them use it as a collaboration tool as well as a uh, educational tool without um, worrying about the most uh, robust simulations. Because getting all the simulations 100% accurate for the drug developers is going to take several months. So over the next several months, we could still sell these development kits to researchers that are willing to work with us or researchers that would like to, to teach it to their students. So our minimal viable product is a computer and a monitor, a headset, and 60 free, de degree of freedom controllers. Uh, it, it was the baseline functionality of, of what we thought we could do to help people. We know that there's much more that we could do uh, in, in all three of our customer segments to really help people, um, but we wanted to, to get something out. So the journey continues. Uh, I think we're definitely a, a go at this point. Uh, we developed some sort of an MVP and we solidified our customer segments to the academic researcher type laboratories because that's the low hanging fruit. And uh, we. We're still going to be talking with drug development companies to find out what they want more. So there's still a lot more hypotheses we have to test in that field, but there is interest. Uh, they would like to, to buy a software similar to us, and, and they're definitely interested in looking into these three-dimensional software platforms. Um, so I would like to, uh, I, I didn't really count the time here. Did we? We're at three minutes. At three minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, so I feel like I rushed through everything because I, I thought I was uh, out of time uh, <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you to the mentors, Stephanie, uh, Dave, and, and Todd. You guys have been instrumental in helping us get out of the building and talking with people. I, I think that uh, this would have, we, we would have went down like two years of development developing the wrong thing. We would have done molecular dynamic simulations, which researchers talked with us about, and they told us that that wasn't really the main focus. They cared more about the Monte Carlo simulations with the new 3D environments. So that's been uh, shifting to our main focus now. And I, I don't think we would have learned that if we didn't get out of the building. I think you have another minute. 